Okay, well we are ready to take our document which we created in our first session and if you're just joining us and you did miss the first session you can go to www.shortcutqueen.com and look under articles for Microsoft Word or just do a search for um, newsletter in the search box and you can get the first issue in this series about creating newsletters in Microsoft Word. Okay, so this is the document that we created and I want to give us a little more breathing room between our header and tagline and our series of articles. So I'll just add an extra return, I hit enter, and now I am ready to select the text. Now I do have, if you look at the bottom, you'll see I have two pages total. So I could click and drag to select all of this text, but being the shortcut queen, I know that if I hold Control and Shift and I hit End, I will actually select from where the blinking cursor is to the end of the document without touching my mouse. I love my shortcuts. Now at this point I want to go ahead and turn this document into a column document. Very easy to do if you know where to go. There is a tab that says Page Layout. Page layout. We'll click there and under Page Layout there is a page setup group with a button that says columns and you can choose one, two, or three. There's a left and right choice. Um, those are two columns. The difference between this two columns and the left and right is that the two columns are equally sized columns. The left and right have a narrow column and a wide column and the left means that the narrow columns to the left, the right means that the narrow columns to the white to, to the right. <laughs> Now, another thing you can do is click on more columns and I always encourage people who come to my classes or seminars to always click on things that have dot dot dots because the three ellipses always mean there's more. So you may find some really cool options you weren't aware of. Well at this point let's just go ahead and click straight on the three button and as quickly as that we have taken our two page document and created a nice layout that is using columns. Now a couple of other things that I want you to see. I'm going to undo what we just did so I'll do a control Z and we'll go back to page layout. We'll take a look at the columns button again and let's check out our choices when we click on more columns dot dot dot. Okay now here again we have one, two, three, left and right and if you look at the preview here you'll see what I meant about the narrow column and the wide and then the wide and then the narrow. Well, if you decide to do any of the columns through this method, you can choose the one, two, or three, but you can also go for more. And in fact, Word will allow you to set up 15 columns. Now, that'd be really skinny text, so I don't know that that's the best idea for this situation. So we'll just jump back to three. We also have the option to do an equal width, or if you were interested in doing something like the left and right, you can say, nope, don't want to have the equal column width, and then you have the ability to create your own custom mix of column sizes, column widths, and then the spacing. Now, I find that equal column widths just is easier to read, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it on equal column widths, and the default is usually a half inch spacing. You can also put a line in between your columns. You get something that looks like this. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And now we have our three columns. What well, we have this nice graphic element added of having a line that goes between our columns. Now, one thing you'll, that you'll notice is that we have this one last little piece of text that didn't quite make it onto our first page. Well, this is where you start seeing the real benefit of using the custom column settings. When we did this before, remember we said that the default spacing was a half an inch. Well, if I go ahead and reduce the spacing, often that gives you a little bit of extra space that will wind up pulling in that last piece of text. So now our newsletter is fitting on one page. Another thing to be aware of is if you would like to put a break in your columns. Now you can see at the top of this second column we have some text. 
that um, was broken from where it started here at the bottom of the first column. Maybe you would like this to start at the top of the first column, or at the top of the second column. What a lot of people will do is they'll actually click, and then they'll start going enter, 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 enter. Now, if you take a look at what happened, by using the enter keys, we get an uneven top on our column. So that is not the answer. I'm going to undo what I did there, and I'm going to show you the last element that you should always be aware of when you are going to do columns. Again, under page layout, and in that page setup group, there is a button. Now, a lot of times on your screen, you'll actually see the word, and it will say breaks. If not, you'll see this logo, and when you click on this logo, you have an option to insert a column break. Now, a column break, and remember, we clicked right in front of the word betcha. When you click on column, that actually takes betcha to the top of the next column, but we get a nice even line at the top of our newsletter. So, looks pretty good, but we're certainly not done. So I hope you'll tune back in when we go into our next steps. We're going to take a look at doing some really cool graphic things with our text. We're going to talk about doing some text boxes, and I just can't tell you everything because I'll ruin the surprise. So thanks for your time. Again, uh, go to www.shortcutqueen and check us out and we will continue this series next time. Have a great day.